Hello and welcome to the video. This is another fresh look at the mixer in iNav 2.0. Now for those of you that watched the channel for a while, you'll know that I did a video a couple of weeks ago where I took a first stab at trying to figure out what the new mixer actually did. At the time of recording this video, the documentation still isn't up to date, so I'm hoping the iNav development team get round to changing that a little bit. And a big thank you to all of those on that original video. And at the beginning of that video, I did say something on the lines of... Now, I expect this video will get out of date relatively quickly, but I wanted to make it because there was a not a lot of information. So thank you to everybody that gave some updates and gave me some feedback on that original video and actually helped me figure out some other things as well. So this updated version, hopefully, is a better view. And again, this one's probably going to become outdated as well, because if I overlay the GitHub repository here for iNav, you can see that there's lots of things potentially changing. A couple of them are going to affect the mixer as well. But the idea of this video is hopefully to make it a little bit easier to follow. I know some people struggled last time, and I think that was partially due to the fact that I wasn't helping explain how the new mixer worked. So without any more ado, let me fire up the mixer and let's have a look at how it actually works and how you can use it as a pilot to do some pretty funky stuff. So here we are in iNav. I have a flight controller plugged in. It's not actually configured for anything because I just want to play around with the mixer. I don't want to do inadvertently something that will upset one of the models that I've already got iNav on. Uh, just FYI, for those of you that don't know what iNav is, go and have a look at the video up in the top left hand corner. And uh, that is the iNav series. I've done a couple of them. This is about the latest version of iNav 2.0 that has this brand new mixer set up. So let me click on connect and let me show you what this actually looks like. So the big difference in iNav, uh, if you're used to things like Betaflight and others, is that the way you go through it is you can start at the top, you calibrate the accelerometer and then you move on all the way down. The next tab is going to be the mixer and this is where we're going to spend our time. Let me just delete all the stuff that's already in here and we'll save and reboot and we'll come back in with the board completely unconfigured. Give it a second to reboot. And here we are, we're back in. So if we just jump back in the mixer, uh, the mixer types that you can choose from, this is very similar to the thing that you'd see at the top of the configuration page in things like Betaflight and Butterflight. And the way it works is that rather it being part of the configuration tab, this is all done in the mixer because iNav is also very aware of fixed wings and designed really to work with those really well. So in the top left hand corner, you can choose between multi-rotor and you can choose the type of multi-rotor that you want. So good old quad X, we can uh, load the mixer and there are the four motor mixers and you can see them where they're going to come out. That's pretty standard stuff. We have different airplane types, flying wings, normal planes, planes with differential thrust, uh, which is quite clever. And then also things like airplanes with differential thrust. So there we are. We actually have two throttles for the two motors there's all the other pieces and interestingly you might notice that there's a little bit of the yaw control mixed into the two throttles so that you also get a little bit of yaw control directly from changing the throttle value of the two motors on a plane with differential thrust so that'll probably give you a hint of the power of the stuff that's in here and the bottom one we have a tricopter and there's just one tricopter type so let me just go to airplane again. So if we were setting this up and we're going to stick it into a traditional airplane, then we could um, load and apply. We'll start everything off. We'll just load the mixer for now to have a look at it. That is what it looks like. Again, if you remember from my previous mixer video, there was another video that I talked about how the mixer works, and it's a legacy thing right back from the early days of base flight and clean flight, if you can remember that far back. And that is, by default, the first two outputs are always reserved for two motors, and then the servos come in after that. So here you've got motor one and motor two, and you can see that servo two uh, is actually going to come out on output three, and you just wire it as per the diagram. Now, the thing that was confusing me last time was the fact that these servo numbers um, are actually reflecting what used to be the way that the mixer worked. It still works in this way, but the old style of setting up a mixer was that you had to find the kind of output that you wanted and then you had to match it. And it was 
really quite tricky and that's what this mixer is there to take care of but if you just wanted to use it like this or maybe you just wanted you didn't want flapper ons because at the moment you can see that the same servo servo 3 has both the stabilized roll which is the output from the flight controller and also the flaps control we could just delete that and then save and reboot and then when we come back in and we start everything we would just plug in everything as per that wiring diagram that we've got at the top of the page. Those are all the presets and those are very, very easy to follow. So let's just jump back in there. So there we are. So we plug in in servo output three, it's gonna be servo two. Servo two is actually the pitch, which is the, the elevator control. And that's right, that's the right one. And it all matches. Brilliant. But what you can do is you can be a bit clever and you can do your very own thing. So let me just delete all of these and again we'll save and reboot and we'll come back in and by removing all of the servo parts of the servo mix I've got a blank slate and I can decide exactly how I want everything set up. So coming into the mixer uh, be careful the mixer preset in the top right hand corner isn't dynamic it's still showing the original mixer that we had it doesn't change as you move things around so that's just there for the preset that you've got set up. As soon as you start moving things, you have to be careful. If we look at the servo outputs, you can see there's no servos configured. So let's add some servos into here. So I'll add a new mixer rule. Uh, servos can be numbered from one to seven. Uh, obviously you're gonna be limited by the number of physical connections that there are on your flight controller, and you can pick these numbers arbitrarily. And this is something that's new in version two of the mixer and I was struggling with to get my head around and the lack of documentation meant that it wasn't kind of making sense in my head. So if we just start, let's start arbitrarily at servo two and we'll say that's going to be stabilized roll. We'll add a new mixer rule. Uh, we'll just pick the next one. That's going to be stabilized pitch. And then this one's going to be, again, we'll just go for the next one, in the series stabilized your, uh, let's save and reboot that. So let's just jump back in the mixer tab. So now what we've said is servo two is gonna be stabilized roll, which is the aileron control. Stabilized pitch is gonna come out on servo three and stabilized yaw is gonna be servo four, okay? Now where those actually come out, what it does, it just assigns them one by one, lowest value of the servo number first and puts it in this row. So for example, servo two is actually gonna come out on the um, S3, which is gonna be the third servo connection on your flight controller. And that, of course, is going to be stabilized roll. So that's where you're gonna plug your aileron. Now I could move these around. So for example, I could make that one four and that one three, and save and reboot. And nothing's apparently gonna change, but where the actual servos plug in has changed a little bit. So now, servo two is still coming out on uh, the connection S3, but now servo three, is now stabilized your, so I'm gonna plug my rudder servo into S4 on the flight controller, and S5 is where I'm gonna plug my elevator servo. So it, it's very powerful and you can move things around. If we go into the servos tab, you can see that there's those three servos, and it's also showing you how they are connected. But to know which one is which, you have to use the mixer tab, and you have to kind of look at which servo output is, and then look at that servo number, and then figure out what that actual connection is. Now we can do some really cool things. So let's say that we are going to create a flying wing. So let's do it from scratch. So we'll, um, again, start in the middle, we'll have stabilized roll, add new mixer rule, servo three, stabilized roll again, uh, we're going to go in the opposite direction, save and reboot, because we only have two servos in something like a flying wing. Come back into the mixer, and now we can see that servo 2 and servo 3 are going to come out on S3 and S4. So that's where the two servos are going to plug in. Again, jumping into the servos tab, this is where you could set the midpoint and the travel adjustment and even reverse them if you wanted to as well. But... What about in this, if we wanted to also add the ability to have something like a, a, a pan servo for a very simple FPV setup? Well, we could, we could add a new mixer rule. 
we can just pick one of the three servo numbers and we could connect it directly to one of the RC channels. So now RC channel 8, we just save and reboot that, the eighth channel on the radio input that's coming from the radio is now going to be output onto the flight controller and we could plug in a little servo that's got the FPV camera on the top. So there we are, servo 2 is going to be stabilized roll, servo 3 is going to be stabilized roll, those are the two servos in the wing itself, and servo 4 is going to be coming from RC channel 8. And that's the part of the power in this. It looks like they are going to also add support for channels 9 to 16. So if you're using an S bus input, you can do loads of things, of course, assuming that you have the physical outputs to keep connecting everything to on your flight controller. If we jump into servos again, we can see servo 4, again, which is that one that we've connected to RC channel 8 to allow us to do something like a pan servo. There's all the details and we can just change everything. So let me just show you a couple of other things. We could add other servos, with other numbers, but it is going to change the way that the actual servos are numbered. If you remember, I said it starts with the lowest number and it's kind of all been making sense because I've started at number two and I've just added these in the bottom. If I added another mixer rule, say I wanted servo one, for example, to be RC channel seven, maybe one I want a pan and tilt servo arrangement for my FPV camera for a head tracker. That could work. Let's save and reboot that. And then what you'll notice when we come back in is the ordering of the servos has changed because iNav will automatically order them from the lowest servo number up and just dynamically assign them to the outputs that are there. So if we jump into the mixer tab, then what you'll notice is that servo one go is put first. Servo one is going to be RC channel seven. That could be the pan or tilt servo that we want to use. So I'm going to have to plug that servo into the third output on the flight controller. Servo two, which is the stabilized roll, is going to go into S4. S5 is the other stabilized roll because that's servo three and that's the servo three down here. And then servo four would be the other pan or tilt control that's connected to RC channel 8. Last thing I'll do, uh, hopefully your mind isn't too blown at the moment, is you can add multiple things onto the same control. So if we just delete all of that goodness, uh, let's just uh, load the standard airplane mixer. We could change again all these numbers, it doesn't make any difference. But one of the things that you will notice is that the same servo has been used twice. And what's going on here is it's set up by default flapperons. So if you only have one control surface, you want to use it as an aileron, but also as flaps as well, you can set that up and that's how it's worked. So both the flap command and the stabilized roll is coming out on servo three. Servo 3 is actually the physical connection S4 on the flight controller, and that's where you plug it in. Now we can delete the flaps. If I wanted to add flaps as a separate servo or a separate two servos, let's assume that we only have one aileron. Um, save and reboot. So now we have the standard three outputs. So we have got the stabilized roll, yaw and pitch. Stabilized pitch is going to come out on S3 because that's servo two, etc. Now we could add a new rule that says, well, we'll just pick one that isn't used. Uh, if we pick number zero or one for the servo, it's going to come before the rest. If we picked number six, we could do maybe flaps and then let's save and reboot that. And now what we should find is when we come back, the first three outputs, because they're lower servo numbers, will be ordered first for the stabilized yaw, stabilized pitch, and stabilized roll. And then we have our flap connection. So servo two is first, servo three, servo five, and then servo six. Servo six is the one we're going to connect to flaps. Again, if we go into the servos, there are all of the outputs that I've got on this flight controller. And I can, again, set the midpoints at the minimum, maximum and reverse them as well. So I would plug it in as per the mixer. So, but hopefully you can see it's it's not completely intuitive. You have to kind of do a couple of steps, but you can kind of keep track of everything. Last little thing I'll show, if you start adding 
more servos than are physically capable of being plugged into the flight controller. So if I added uh, maybe servo 7, let's put the one at the very end for channel 8, uh, maybe we're going to try and do the similar thing with a little pan servo on this little plane as well, then in Mixer it looks fine. And again, you'll notice that you can't see the end servo 7 actually isn't in on here at all and that's because i physically don't have that many output pwm output pins to plug stuff into and we can see that again if we go into servos you'll see that that last one i've selected servo 7 which is potentially a pan servo if that's the way i wanted to use it connected just to one of the channels on the radio hasn't got an output so i would have to use something with an awful lot of outputs on the matek wing boards or something like that to keep adding stuff so hopefully that's a little bit clearer. Bottom line, if you just want to load the standard stuff that's already in iNav and you don't want to change anything, all you have to do is load and apply the mixer here, yeah, make sure it's saved and rebooted, and then you just carry on doing all the setup as you would with any other flight controller. But if you want to be a bit smart and you want to try and change things around and change the way that things actually work, then this is a really cool way of doing it. By using the servo numbers, you can just pick them at random. Uh, servo numbers from zero to seven is the maximum that, that is there. Just put them in order for the different outputs that you want, and then just keep track. Use this little crib sheet here for the output mapping to figure out where those servos that you are selecting are actually gonna come out. Because again, if I delete servo two, you'll see that servo three is now coming out on that first output. If I put that new mixer rule back where servo two was stabilized pitch, and save and reboot. And again, you didn't see it quite dynamically update. I think there's a couple of little features in the mixer that just need smoothing out. So hopefully that'll uh, make it a little bit easier. But if we jump back in, see there's servo two back at the beginning, then servo three, then servo 5 and servo 6 because we haven't got a servo 4 it's just ordered them in number so hopefully that helps hopefully that explains a little bit more about how it works um, and uh, hopefully this whole interface will get even more intuitive and easier to use as we continue to see developments from the iNav team big thank you to the iNav team for all the hard work in getting this sorted out. Um, I just hope that soon the documentation catches up so that this stuff is a little bit easier to understand and uh, we as pilots don't have to spend as much time trying to figure this stuff out. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organized into easy to use playlists, so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organize all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.